a British electric shower that went bang and started spraying water out everywhere. This is Ralphie, my brother's shower uh, unit, and uh, I'll give you a, an oversight of what it is in the first place. In the UK, we commonly have what are called electric showers. And they basically fit inside the shower cubicle. You've got a main supply going in at 240 volts and you've got a cold water feed going in. You can select cold, warm or hot uh, for your shower and then you can regulate the flow of the water. So if you want it to be hot, you can turn the water flow down. And if you want it to be cold, you can turn the water flow up. It's just sort of fixed power levels. Ralphie popped into the shower and he pushed a button and he said there's a loud bang and the water started spraying out all this sort of all, all around this unit at the bottom. And the first thing I thought was that the safety device had blown. So I take this off and we have the control circuit board here. We have the heater block. Uh, we have the solenoid water inlet valve and we have the flow regulator. And normally when something like this happens, the first thing I suspected because the water had been off to his house when he turned it on, the, there was air in the pipe and it suddenly flowed through. The most common thing is there's a little pressure release here for this pipe here and when it blows a little plug out water starts squirting out the hose at the bottom but that did not happen when I went over to Ralph's place to check this out and I turned it on uh, and pushed the cold water button to actually start it uh, water started just spraying out all over the inside the unit so there's something else has failed I initially thought it was an o-ring between the mo one of the modules but it's in a completely different area so let's take this to bits and see what's happened and I'll explain all the, the function of all the bits as we do so so the first thing I'm going to take out I'm going to take the dial off so I'll whip this off and this is the bit that regulates the flow of water through the unit so we have this solenoid valve and it's notable that as soon as this started happening Ralph pressed the stop button this thing is an annoying delay it's a cool down feature so the water didn't stop immediately but uh, as he stepped out the bath uh, it suddenly cut off and this solenoid kicked in and then the water started stopped flooding out the unit so it's after the solenoid valve let's get a bigger screwdriver than this and let's take the solenoid valve off so a couple of screws hold the solenoid valve assembly in i could take these spade terminals off that would probably be helpful as well if i can get them off are they going to come off? Yes, they are. Eaton solenoid valve, that's quite interesting. That's quite good quality. So I take these screws out and maybe, maybe just, this will slide out. No, it's not going to slide out. Right, let's take the next bit out. Let's loosen the screws off on the water regulator that uh, regulates the flow of water. So these units, they're very popular in the UK. I know that doesn't seem to go down that well with Americans who think they're just a death trap. In reality, well, when water isn't spraying all over the inside, they're actually relatively safe. I don't know of that many accidents involving these. Let's lift the circuit board out. The circuit board, incidentally, is spring-loaded, so if you really press the front unit, or just push this back. It also holds it in a sort of controlled position. The push button's in the front of a membrane for insulation. Let's hinge this out the way and take this screw out. So let's uh, get these terminals out of the way. So I'm going to lift this up now. And the first thing that comes out is the solenoid. I may have to take more out to get this apart. I've not taken this particular model apart before. Is this going to let me take it out? So the first assembly that comes out is the solenoid valve. So this is the cold water feed in and the solenoid kills water to the whole thing. The o-ring and this one looks intact. Uh, that then feeds the water to the regulator, which then feeds it into the water heater tank. Let's get the water heater tank off. And the water heater tank has a big thermal cutout on top so that it cuts power off to the whole thing if it overheats. And it's got two heating elements inside it, insulated heating elements. Different to the normal ones, I'm used to the plastic ones. This is copper, that's quite nice. Let's lift this up. So the next thing that comes out is this O-ring here is intact. That is not supposed to drop out. Oh, water flooding everywhere. I'm glad I brought a paper towel with me. 
let's uh, mop the water up. Oh, look at this. The back is completely broken off this. Where's the plastic then? Is that bit of plastic still in here? Is it dropped out at some point during transit? It may have dropped out during transit. I don't see it. Uh, okay. So this is the pressure switch that pushes up. This detects when there's a, a flow of water into the unit. It pushes up against this plunger here, which hits a switch in here, which signals to the circuit board. The circuit board has been very reliable. I'm not seeing... This is an old unit. I'm not seeing a switchboard power supply. Where is that bit of plastic? It's dropped off that. It's it's disappeared. It's popped out at some point when I've been taking it off the wall. Okay. So, uh, right. Uh, Somebody, water comes in, goes through the flow regulator that regulates the temperature, um, other than the fact you get two temperature settings via the different heating elements. It pushes up this plunger, which then enables the switch. I think that may be to detect when there's been too much pressure and it cuts it off. It gives you a warning if the pressure is too high or is it an enabling system? It's probably an enabling system in this instance. Um, the circuit board has two fairly chunky relays on it. Uh, it is very retro. What's this stuff? Oh, that's uh, just a, they've put a conformal coating over just parts of the circuit board. Which is odd. So the transformer here has the red and black coming off the top. Is that the, that is the red and black is coming onto the, so that's the supply onto this. There is another little relay here, which I'm guessing may be going down to the solenoid valve. Uh, white wire comes down to here, white wire goes into that. So that, that relay there controls the solenoid valve that enables the water. These two relays control the uh, heating elements. So we've got the incoming supply cable goes to two blues and a brown. The brown is the live, the two blues are the neutrals. The neutrals go straight to the uh, heating elements. Uh, the brown goes to the thermal cutout and then there's two feeds that then go to the two separate relay feeds that then come back to the... Uh, the heat elements. Well, that's a, that's a bit terminal for this heater unit. This is not a serviceable... I don't know if spares are available for this because it's pretty old, but having said that, if it's got to the age that the plastic is degraded, uh, that that just pushed it over the edge, that sort of slight water hammer, hammer well, that really has cracked, uh, then I think it's time to replace a shower. So I'll get my new shower. That's probably the best bet. Interested to see inside it though. Uh, part of me wants to see inside this. Should I take a look inside this? I think I should. So just give me a moment. I'm going to open that. The unit is now open. That was quite hard. As you can see, it looks like it exploded. It didn't explode. I just prized it apart. Here are the two heat elements. We've got the two uh, connections coming down here going to what appear to be two spirals heat elements that then come to the outer uh, terminals. I'm guessing that there's, yeah, I'm guessing that is an inner one and an outer one. Um, interesting to note, the thermal cutout has that little dimple, which it sits into, and you can actually see the bimetallic strip on the bottom of that that clicks uh, out if this uh, unit gets too hot and cuts the power off. That's used when things like the water pressure goes down so low that uh, it's low enough that it's still high enough that it can actually push the sort of switch in to actually enable the shower. But that's a really powerful switch. Is that what that is? That's strange. Uh, but uh, not a high enough flow rate that it can actually... Uh, oh, more water. That it can actually... Uh, keep it cool so if it gets too hot above the point that you know it, it could actually cause scalding then it will cut off this is the plastic insert that was in that so you get the water inlet comes into here and interestingly the water outlet which is this little metal pipe in here uh, you've got this little pressure valve that goes in like that and then this goes in like that 
And then when you screw this whole assembly in, it really is just two screws hold, hold everything together and holds it in place. The water flows in, it flows past the heat elements, but then it can't get out until it gets to the top and then it comes down the central pipe and that's the bit that feeds the, the shower uh, hose. If the pressure in here builds up too high, this little plastic bit in here, let me show you it, I'll just slide this back out. This just pops out as well. It's all held together by O-rings. It has the little rubber bung. That's what I thought had the problem was. But uh, if the pressure goes up too high, it blows that rubber bung out. And that uh, this is when usually when the uh, the shower heads got too calcium cal calcated. I'll say it's the the calcium deposits inside it. Uh, and the pressure in this uh, thing builds up too much because the water can't get out. It'll blow this out, and then it'll squirt the water down the front of the shower unit. Uh, via this little hose. But that's not what happened in this instance. It was a complete catastrophic failure of the uh, diaphragm assembly on this. The plastic's broken completely. And it must have been, you know, it was probably partly an age thing, but also partly the the thing that pushed it over the edge was the fact that the water had been off uh, and therefore there was air in the pipes and that hammer initially uh, caused that problem. It's worth mentioning that they do tell you that when you first turn it on, when you've installed the system, that you should turn this uh, uh, the water regulator down to the sort of the what do they recommend? It, it had a wee label on it. Where is the label? It had a wee note. Um, I don't see that note. But it basically came to warning saying, uh, turn it to a level that may actually just regulate the water flow so that it comes in slowly, and that would take the stress off that. That's uh, probably a factor there but also it avoids that situation that if the water pressure in this increases too quickly it blows out that little rubber bung which is quite common uh, quite, quite a common failure mode and very easy to fix you could either get a new insert or if you manage to catch the little rubber ball before it went down the drain then uh, you can actually just re-push it back into these from the bottom and it'll uh, fix that but there we go uh, a lot of the reliability of the electronics which have been on for 20 years? Maybe 25 years in the case of this unit. It's looking in very good condition. A lot of the reliability will be down to the fact that it's a traditional transformer being used to feed the circuitry with just simple, plain circuitry. Uh, there is only one electrolytic, well, there's a couple of electrolytic capacitors. There's probably a timing one. Um, and then this one, but the circuitry is very retro. This will be the power supply over here. It's very, very simple. And the Chip is just a CD four hundred one one. It's just a standard CMOS logic chip they've used for timing. Oh, turn right. Uh, so message to turn right. Your electronics appear to be super reliable in these. They've not given problems over a very very long time. Uh, but the plastic did in this instance did degrade, particularly because it's a. Uh, under pressure of, of the water uh, going in on that diaphragm system. But there we go. Interesting. And now it's time to get Ralph a new shower. <laughs>